Hi everyone, this is David Wicks, your instructor for both EDTC 6431 and EDTC 6536. Uh, I'm teaching both of those classes this summer and we have a common assignment, although it's um, involving different books, uh, but both uh, classes have been asked to uh, read uh, a text and to read it using an e-reader and specifically using uh, a Kindle e-reader. And so just to clarify, the Kindle e-reader uh, is uh, something that you can download for your PC for free, something that you can download for your Macintosh computer for free, something that you could put on your iPhone for free, your iPad for free, Android device for, for free, and there are others as well. Uh, but I just want to make it clear that I'm not expecting you to go out and buy a Kindle. Um, they cost a little over a hundred dollars and uh, in my opinion are, are uh, a really nice reading tool um, but I do not work for Amazon and I'm not trying to sell them um, and I am trying to keep the cost of textbooks affordable as well as um, help you to experience um, uh, the use of electronic books um, because uh, as reports like the 2011 Horizon report and numerous other educational reports have uh, mentioned there is a strong movement towards uh, the use of uh, electronic texts and as teachers I want you to be informed consumers or informed um, decision makers uh, who can either advocate for this technology or advocate uh, against this technology if you don't uh, think it meets the needs of students. So um, that and, and in fact is one of our goals in this, uh, this project or this as assignment is that um, throughout the course uh, you will be reflecting on your use of the e-reader and um, you will be pointing out things that you like and things that you dislike and hopefully in your final reflection you could uh, make come to come come to some kind of conclusion that uh, it would work for your students or it would not work for your students so let's go ahead and just jump in here and I'm going to be both walking you through the project as well as um, demonstrating some of the things that you'll need to know in setting up your Kindle. Here you can uh, see uh, basically the, the requirements of the project. And again, this is a, a similar, this happens to be the one from EDTC 6536, uh, but the only difference between it and the one from EDTC 6431 is the book that's being read. So um, please keep that in mind as, as you're looking at this. The, the first step that you'll need to take uh, care of is to download the free uh, Kindle e-reader app uh, for the device of your choice. And um, if we just look at a screen here, I've got um, Amazon's uh, website up, the Kindle website. I'm going to go ahead and go to Amazon.com. And uh, on Amazon.com, um, if we just click on uh, or roll over the Kindle link, and then if you scroll down, um, you can see free Kindle e-reading apps. And there you'll see the list of them. So we can see all of these different options. And so I would uh, encourage you to, to use the one that applies. Uh, if you have more than one of these devices, I would encourage you to use more than one. Uh, I find it um, very handy uh, to be able to have my Android phone and be using it as well as my iPad as well as my Kindle device and I'm not going to walk you through the actual steps of, of downloading and installing the application um, that there are directions if you click on any of these links to do that okay once you have the app then installed then you're going to purchase the Kindle ebook and in this case, this is again a point where I want to make sure the classes understand the differences. In one class, um, the EDTC 6536, they are reading the, uh, the text, um, uh, the technology tool belt for teaching. And so only those students in that class should be actually accessing that device. Um, students who are in the uh, the other course, the EDTC 
um, six five or excuse me six four three one are reading the disrupting class uh, text by Christensen and so you'll want to make sure uh, that you are are uh, getting that text but again quickly to go back to the uh, Amazon website uh, once you are in the Kindle store um, you can put in the name of the text and hit enter and you will then see the text and in this particular case um, please do make sure there are two texts here uh, we're actually using this edition it looks like it's about a dollar more uh, but it's uh, an updated a 2010 edition of the original 2008 text if you accidentally bought the 2008 text um, it's not going to hurt anything because uh, you're reflecting on the text um, we're not um, giving you some kind of an uh, objective assessment on it and same way with the other class uh, you're just going to find it you'll click on the link and um, you'll make the purchase of it and if hopefully you already have an amazon.com account but if not um, you can uh, pick one up okay so you've you've done that and so once you have both the app uh, as well as the the book when you actually go into the Kindle and I'm going to load that now on my computer here when you load your app and this is actually on a Macintosh computer uh, you can see um, the books that it's showing that you already have uh, listed and then uh, you're able to click on those and to open them now if you're not seeing either of your books uh, clicking this sync button will let the uh, let it go out and and uh, try to sync with your account and make sure that you've got everything and then you also are able to click on this archived one so I have quite a number of books that I have on other devices uh, that I don't have on um, this this device so the archive and if I wanted to bring one of those forward for example uh, Ambrose is how learning works um, I could just double click on it and that one would now be a book on this particular device it's taking me in this case right to where I'm at in the book uh, reading it on another device and I'm going to click on home again and, and get back to this once you open a book um, you have choices it will take you to where it thinks you're at in the book and if you're going from device to device um, it might be confused so uh, it might you might have skimmed forward quite a ways on one device so on my iPad I might have looked something up uh, in the back of the book and then when I would open my Android device it would ask me if I want to sync to the most to the farthest point that I am in the book and it would take me to that point when actually maybe I'm on chapter two uh, so you you need to keep that in mind it, it doesn't really know what you've read it's just looking at the farthest you've turned in the book on any device and moving you to, to that location so uh, if you are um, they use fairly common symbols so here's like a um, allowing me to go someplace else in the book um, and so if I click on that uh, I can click to go to the table of contents and then um, as well as uh, beginning or I can find a specific page or location uh, some ebooks uh, will have page numbers with them uh, where others will only have location numbers so this will be a little bit confusing for you uh, I think both the texts we have only have location numbers and so um, the location number is uh, a location on a on the page um, so actually um, you can be looking at what you think is the same page and it's actually a uh, uh, there's a different number there for you um, so uh, if I move to the next one I'm on location 13 uh, and uh, if I go back to the first one I'm back to location 2 so it doesn't seem like there's a location 1 uh, but it's it's uh, just pointing there's some point on this page that it's at and so you'll you'll have to get used to that a little bit um, uh, and that that can be one of the concerns you have 
so once you've uh, decided that you're ready to, to begin reading the book, um, you can just um, you know start with the wherever you were going to start. Uh, uh, and, uh, and if you're reading it on your PC or your Mac, you can use your arrow keys to advance to the next page and move through the text. Um, if you're if you've found something that you want to highlight, you can select that. So I'm just going to select a line here, and I just drag across it just like you would in Word, and then you could choose to either highlight or to add a note. Um, so if I choose highlight, that text is highlighted and that will be included in, in the highlights that I have. You also uh, can can choose to, to make that again. A, uh, you can mark it with a note. So if there's something down here that I want to make a note on, I can choose to add a note, um, type in something. And click Save. And then I have a little note there that I can uh, click on later and either edit or rem remember what it says. And they continually update this, so um, some of the things I'm showing you now uh, during our time together may change as well. So you're going to go through, read the book, um, read it online uh, using the devices that you have and uh, following the schedule that's in the schedule document of, for our course. And then at the end of each, let me jump back to our syllabus here, you're highlighting and reading and you're going to uh, want to make those marks available anonymously on the Kindle website for other people to view. And this is a, a part where it might be a little confusing for you uh, because you might um, uh, be thinking that you will um, just immediately see uh, everybody's and they'll be identified by name, something like you might see in Blackboard or Talkwheel. And what the way that Amazon is currently using this feature is it's completely anonymous and it's not always uh, it's not always in near real time that you see these updates to the notes and updates to the to the highlights. So if you've gone and looked and you don't see yours immediately, uh, you might need to come back later and take a look. But I'm going to go now to where we can set that up. I'm going to jump to back to the uh, web here, and I'm going to go to um, http colon slash slash kindle.amazon.com. And once you enter that address, um, it immediately changes it to an HTTPS, meaning that it's a secure site and it's ready for you to to log in and so you're going to come over and just click on sign in and put in your um, your the email address that you're using for Ken, for Amazon as well as your password and log in It'll take just a second to do that and then it does uh, kind of a nice thing here where it um, has a daily review for you. So any of the books that you're reading or have read, um, it will um, list like a review of a quote for you um, that you can look at. And you also have the ability to um, follow uh, other people's reading. Once you've gotten to this point, then you'll click on your books. And here is where you'll be able to see the list of books that you're reading. And for each book, so for example, this one, uh, Academically Adrift, is a book that I'm um, just about finished reading. Uh, but it has, um, I, I have it marked as, as reading it, but I have not um, done anything else with it in terms of, I've not made my reading status and rating public. I haven't done that and I haven't made my notes um, public. And so um, I'm just indicating that I'm reading it here for myself, but I'm not sharing that with anyone else at this time. Okay, um, for this book here, you can see that it's one that I have listed as hope to read, the autobiographical, 
autobiography of uh, Benjamin Franklin. That's a default setting. So uh, if they've given you, if they've added a book, a free book to your account, um, that's the setting that you'll see to begin with. And so let's come down here to what we, where we see the uh, disrupting class book. For those of you reading the technology tool, tool belt for teaching book, uh, that's down here further on the list, but I'm going to demonstrate using the disrupting uh, class text. And so the first thing you'll do is indicate that you are reading the book. So you'll click that link and that will change. And then the second thing, turn on my status and then I turn this on. Now I've uh, been able to make this so my both my um, notes, the um, notes that I'm uh, taking in terms of um, any written comments are public as well as um, my highlights are public. Okay, so now if we click on the link to this text Okay, we come into this book now and we can see it. And we can see that I have have it set for that I'm reading it. And I also have this unlocked, meaning that I've made it so my comments uh, and my uh, highlighting are public. And um, there is uh, posts from this book from uh, this person. And I'm not quite sure how they're getting theirs to show up as with their, with their identity. Um, and maybe... That's something um, that we can figure out. This is new uh, information for me. I have not seen it like this before. Uh, but if we scroll down a little bit now, you can see that these are my highlights. These are things that I've highlighted in the text. So as you go through and highlight, you'll be able to see those. And you do have the ability, once you're here, to decide, oh, I don't really want to highlight that, um, or I want to add a note. Okay. And um, if you're, let's say, reading this on your iPhone, it might be a bit cumbersome to make notes on your iPhone. So you could come to the PC or the Mac side and actually use your keyboard uh, on your computer to type in notes. Um, you also have the ability to go to that location uh, since you have the app downloaded on your computer and um, look at uh, look for you know where, where this is in context. Um, so you can see this. Now, if I click on the all highlights, I'm seeing then now everyone's highlights, okay, or at least I'm supposed to be. So one of the parts of the assignment is that you're looking at where other people have uh, made highlights and you're uh, making a comment on those. And in some cases, you'll see where um, there will be a quote that's quite popular. So in this case, uh, motivation uh, is the catalyzing ingredient for every successful innovation is something that 59 users thought was an invaluable quote. And that might be one that you either highlighted or didn't highlight, which in my case, it isn't one of mine. So I could choose now to include that as one of my highlights. Uh, but in terms of our project, um, this might be something that I then uh, reflect on because I somehow either missed it or didn't see it as being important, and maybe I still don't see it as being important, and I want to discuss why um, I didn't highlight it. But I think you get the general idea of what, what's expected of you. Um, I need to say that this isn't a perfect technology so again you might make a highlight personally and then you might go to the application expecting to see your highlights and they don't seem to be there um, you do want to make use of Amazon they have um, Kindle has their own support group um, you can click on a link oh, let me show you that uh, if we go back to the Amazon website um, there is when you go to the Kindle site itself there's Kindle support. If you click on that link and you choose this contact us, um, you can get to the point after you say what your issue is you, from a list pull down list. Um, you say that um, I'm having trouble uh, with um, Kindle books, subscriptions, and other content. As soon as you um, say that, they'll give you some suggestions. But if their suggestions don't work, then you can have them call you. So by clicking this call us, 
um, it will immediately pop up and ask you to put your number in and it will call you and I've had pretty good success with this I don't have, find myself waiting on hold for a long time it just calls me right away um, and I'm able to uh, work through an issue with them so if you feel like you're having trouble with this application um, let me know um, but take care of this yourself in terms of contacting Amazon and working through the issue with with them uh, they'll be able to tell you whether or not you re need to reset your device or um, something else that you may want to try but I just want to make sure you're aware of that uh, support option and, and to take advantage of it okay so by the end of the second week you will have done the reading and this is again for one of the groups make sure you check um, in the um, course information for what exactly you're supposed to have read uh, for the text you're working with uh, it'll again explain in this case this group is um, the book they're reading doesn't really have a sequential order so uh, they're able to just pick chapters they want to read there's a lot more chapters in this book um, whereas the other book we are going in a sequential order you want to make highlights make comments uh, notes in the book and to make sure that you're sharing those and then each week you're going to make a blog post um, in your beat portfolio this is what you will put in your beat portfolio each week uh, where you'll be reflecting on what you're reading in the text as well as your experience with the e-reader you'll always want to include a sentence or two about your current experience using the e-reader uh, in the book ebook uh, and this is a place where you may feel like after week one or week two you've said it all uh, two tips there one don't say it all in the first week so if you dislike features one through five that you list um, only tell us about feature one the first week and save feature two that you dislike for the second week and maybe you know have a plan of saying something you like and something you dislike uh, and be thinking about how it's different. How's this different than, uh, and what would my students think? And what would they struggle with? What would they like about this? Um, but again, this doesn't have to be more than a, a couple of sentences. Uh, so don't make the mistake of, of giving me uh, an essay on reasons why you don't like an, uh, an ebook in your first post then do a lot of experimenting see if you if something that you don't like you can make some setting changes and correct it and give us tips uh, if you found a way to um, make something available or hide something that's distracting or get around quicker um, uh, those are all good things to share with us so that the rest of us can uh, have uh, better success or a more successful experience uh, in reading the text and then you will want to make sure that you um, post it by the date that is listed in the schedule so that's always the case uh, with any any work that I ask you to do um, try to get it in there get your your blog post up by the date possible and make sure you include a descriptive post heading uh, and so for the one group where the chapter is about um, like uh, uh, differentiated learning maybe you would say something like students learn differently as you're heading for your blog post rather than this is my chapter two reflection and then make sure that you tag your post uh, so include relevant tags uh, always include the course ID and it looks like I have a little typo there it should just be EDTC 6536 would be for one course or EDTC 6431 for the other course uh, make sure that's always a tag and then uh, key terms so if in reading about how students learn differently uh, you're seeing differentiated instruction and that's a, a key term for you then include that and then uh, make sure that you read other people's uh, highlights um, and comments and you're not going to be able to these are going to going to be anonymous so um, try to find something you can look at the location numbers uh, location number a little tip for you if you're looking at the Kindle book if you go into the table of contents on your book 
let's say that you go uh, to, you wanted something from chapter two, if you clicked on this link, um, it's telling me down at the bottom that this is location 466. If I go back to the table of contents, um, and then I go to uh, chapter three, this one's at 792, so between about 460 and 790 is where chapter two occurs. So when I would be looking um, in my uh, book about that, and I, can't, I, I might be looking at two different books, I would be looking for the location number that would fit when I'm looking at someone else's comments of all comments. I'm looking for one that fits in that, that range. Uh, so I would be trying to find a comment that fits in that particular range, reading it and then reflecting on it. Uh, it'd be something that someone else shared. So I hope that makes uh, sense to you. Let me know if you have questions on that. Each week you're going to be making this blog post. You should have your portfolio. It looks like everybody's getting their portfolios set up. So let me know if that's still an issue, What you, if you need some help with it. But get your portfolio set up. And so you'll just walk through this process. Read, highlight, make comments on the current things that you're being asked to read, current chapter you're, or chapters you're being asked to read in course information. Now for the group that's reading uh, chapters in non-sequential order, when you're actually commenting on what someone else posts, nobody may be reading the same chapters you're reading, so you've got more freedom to just select uh, something that someone highlighted that may not necessarily be in the same place in the book. And make sure you've got your highlights set to public, um, post uh, a reflection about the current chapter reading, and so the things you want to make sure you do is a sentence or two about your current experience using the e-reader, the e-book. Make sure that you posted it by the due date. Make sure you have a descriptive headline. Uh, make sure you have relevant tags. Uh, make sure that you read other people's highlights and comments. And then categorize your posts using your program standards. So if you're in either CNI or MAT or ARC, uh, then you have standards, program standards, and so if they apply to the one that includes instructional technology, you can check that standard, but they might apply to other ones, so um, be on the lookout for other standards in your program that they apply to. If you're in a program um, other than one of those, um, then you're listing your own standards, and you'll uh, try, to f try to find one that'll fit with there. And then the very last thing is you want to include include a link to the public highlights page in your post so that other readers can see firsthand what's being done. And so what I mean by this is um, if we come back up here and we can see that this is the actually the page. This is this um, up here. This link is actually the public highlights um, for this particular one. And so anybody can actually come here and get in. And so if you'll um, share this link that's listed here, if I just copy this link and um, put that in my blog and make sure it's an active link, then someone else, um, even the person who doesn't have this book, should be able to get to this page and help get a general sense of, of the project that you're on. Uh, so I think that's all for now. If you have questions for me, please uh, look first to the um, discussion area in the course, the questions area, um, so that we can uh, discuss them as a group. And if you're struggling getting this going, I'm encouraging you to contact uh, Amazon, their Kindle tech support first, but do let me know if you feel like it's, it's slowing you down in your work. So with that, I wish you a good day. Thanks. Bye-bye.